Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the calculation of expression for the frequency of oscillations in a stable multivibrator. So, in the previous video, I have given you the explanation of this stable multivibrator circuit where it consists of two capacitors instead of resistors. See here we have a capacitor C1, here we have capacitor C2 which is used as a coupling element from collector to base on either sides. Okay, so as there was no resistor here as a coupling element, there is no need to worry about the triggering pulse because of the, because of the existence of this capacitance, what happens automatically? The capacitor charges and discharges and whenever the voltage across capacitor reaches V gamma, that changes the uh, transistor's state that may be on or off. Okay, so as the as both the capacitors are existed on either sides as a coupling element, so capacitors are automatically charging and discharging changes the states automatically. That leads to unstable states. Okay, that means if you are worrying about any stable state in the monostable multivibrator and bistable multivibrator, such type of stable states are not there in this stable multivibrator. Both the states are quasi-stable states. Both of these states are Quasi stable states. As, as both the quasi stable states are available, there is no use of triggering pulse. There is no use of triggering pulse in the stable multivibrator. If you see the output waveforms at four different places, generally for all the multivibrators, we calculate the output, we measure the output waveforms at four places. At four places, where are the four places? At collector of first transistor and at base of the first transistor and similarly at collector of second transistor and at base of the second transistor so at bases and at collectors we generally measure the output waveform so if you see the first transistor collector waveform which is first it is in the vcc so vcc nothing but first we have assumed the condition like q1 is in off state and q2 is in on state this is the first condition in here Q1 is in off state and Q2 is in on state. So as the Q1 transistor is in off state, there exists a maximum voltage drop across that particular transistor. So VC becomes VCC. Okay, first transistor collector gives you value of VCC. At the same time as the transistor Q2 is in on state, it is giving VCE sat. Very small value VCE sat. During this period, as the Q1 one is in off state and Q2 is in on state, the base of the first transistor slowly charging. See, as the second transistor is in on state, see which one is in on? Q2 is in on. So as this second transistor is in on state, what happens? There is a flow of current through this resistance and capacitance C2 to this on transistor. Now what is the, pro what is the status of the capacitor? Capacitor slowly charges. What is the maximum value for the capacitor to charge VCC? So as the capacitor slowly charges, charges from the minimum value, the same potential will appear across the base one of the Q1. So base of the Q1 transistor. So in this particular duration, capacitor charges towards VCC. But it will not have wait until the VCC. So whenever V gamma occurs, transistor Q1 comes into on state. So that's why in that duration, the voltage across this capacitor charges. That's why the base voltage is charging. So when it reaches V gamma, again, the states are inverse. At the same time, Vb2, uh, voltage across Vb2, voltage across base of the second transistor. And it is an on transistor. That's why it is nothing but VBE sat. So that's why this is VBE sat. If you understand, these states, what is the voltage at the collector, what is the voltage at the base and how the changes are occurring from one state to another state, then you can easily analyze the calculation of frequency of oscillations of this stable multivibrator. Okay. And one more thing here, there is no triggering pulse. Both the states are quasi stable states. So whenever the base across the first transistor base voltage reaches V gamma, then automatically the Q1 transistor comes into on state and Q2 comes into off. This is the state for Q1 off and Q2, Q1 on and Q2 off. Okay. The cases are altered. Again, now VB2 
charges when it reaches v gamma again the states are inversed okay so keeping this entire waveforms in mind let us calculate the voltage for the first that means vb1 i am going to say vb1 for this first cycle okay so the voltage of base of q1 is vb1 is equal to vbe is at minus i2 into rc see here in this particular duration vb1 is equal to previously it is what is the previous value previous value is vbe sat here it is vbe sat listen carefully previous value was vbe sat now suddenly as the changes as the case is altered the vbe sat now gone to down by a value of i2 into rc by a value of i2 into rc see here rc here the four r1 collector resistors are indicated as rc so this is the current i2 flowing and this is the current i1 okay so this current flows through this capacitor through the base one this is the way okay starting from vcc through this capacitor uh, so th sorry through this resistor rc and through the capacitor c2 and then entering into the base one of this particular transistor so as we are measuring the voltage at this particular point the voltage the time constant in this path is nothing but rc into c c or c2 okay here we are taking some c okay now i2 into rc this is the voltage value appeared at the base one so it is vb is at minus i2 into rc where i2 rc i2 rc how can we write i2 rc see as this particular transistor was in on state as this transistor is in on state see q2 is in on state q2 is in on state means what is the voltage from collector to emitter here vce or v out is equal to we can write it as vcc minus i2 into rc vcc minus i2 into rc because the voltage appeared from collector to emitter is the voltage which is eliminated this part of i2 into rc vcc minus i2 into rc so how can we write i2 into rc is equal to simply vce it is set because it is in saturation region vcc minus vce set okay so this value needs to be substituted here so it is vcc minus vce set okay so for this period let us consider this is 0 and t1 and t2 okay so for this period like for 0 less than t less than t1 vb1 rises exponentially towards vcc so voltage across vb1 will rise up to vcc up to vcc it has to charge okay so we know v out is equal to v final minus v final minus v initial into e power minus t by tau okay what is v naught v naught is vb1 so vb1 is equal to what is the final value for the capacitor to charge vcc minus what is the final value v final vcc v initial is this value v initial is this value substitute this r2 here then it becomes this value becomes vb1 is equal to vbe sat minus vcc plus vce sat okay so substitute this initial value e initial is vbe sat minus vcc 
plus Vc is at into e power minus t by tau. Okay, tau is nothing but here e power minus t by tau 1. This is for first case. Okay, where tau 1 is equal to R1 into C1. Tau 1 is equal to R1 into C1. That is the time constant. Now, exactly at t is equal to T1, yet t is equal to T1. So, at t is equal to T1, what happens exactly at t is equal to T1? Vb1 becomes V gamma. Vb1 becomes V gamma. So, Vb1 becomes V gamma. So, V gamma is equal to Vcc minus 2Vcc here. So, Vcc minus, this is minus Vcc. Uh, inside, we have 2Vcc. So, Vcc, this is minus of minus plus Vcc. See, minus here. This is minus. So, it is minus of minus minus of minus it is plus so two vcc is there and if you take minus common it's entirely vc set plus vb set so two vcc minus of vb set plus vc set into e power minus t1 by so at t is equal to t1 Tau 1 is nothing but R1, C1. So, E power minus T1 by R1, C1 is equal to 2 into, uh, take it as plus, so that these 2 will be altered, 2 into VCC minus VBE set plus VCE set divided by 2 whole divided by Vcc minus V gamma. See this is also Vcc minus this is the average voltage which is nothing but Vcc minus V gamma. So then it is 2 only. So that is equal to we can write it as 2 Vcc minus V gamma by Vcc minus V gamma because the Gamma voltage, the gamma value, cutting voltage is the average value of the saturation voltages of both the junction voltages. You can write it as VB sat plus VCE sat by 2. Okay. So, you can write it as E power T1 by RC is equal to some 2. So, T1 is equal to LN2 into RC. So, here RC is nothing but R1, C1, I think. It is not plain RC. So, R1, C1. So, it is R1, C1, L2. It is nothing but 0 0.693. R1, C1 into L2 is nothing but 0 0.693. So, that is equal to T1 is equal to 0 0.693 R1 into C1. In the similar way, we can calculate the voltage across VB2. Okay. Till now, we have calculated VB1. Okay. Similarly, if you consider VB2, which value will come now? Go to the waveform. See, till now, you have worked for this one, up to T1. If you do the same in this particular duration, from T1 less than T less than T2, then two, T2 will come. So, Similarly, we can calculate VB2 so that T2 can be computed or can be calculated. So, T2 is equal to 0 0.693 R2 C2. This is T2. So now what is the overall time period of this stable multivibrator? 
for one cycle for one, for one complete cycle it is t1 plus t2 so the overall time period t is equal to t1 plus t2 that is equal to 0 0.693 r1 c1 plus 0 0.693 R2C2. So you can take 0 0.693 common R1C1 plus R2C2. This is the overall T value. Okay. Suppose if you have chosen the values of R1 and R2 as R and C1 and C2 as some C, then it becomes 2 into RC. So if R1 is equal to R2 is equal to something like R and C1 is equal to CT is equal to C then T is equal to 0 0.693 into 2 into RC that is equal to 1.386 into RC this is the value of overall time period for the stable multivibrator once if you know the time period we can calculate the frequency like frequency of oscillations of a stable multivibrator f is equal to 1 by t that is equal to 1 by 1.386 into rc value okay this is the frequency of oscillations of a stable multivibrator okay so the frequency of oscillation may be varied over a range from cycles to mega cycles by varying the values of r and c Okay, so the frequency of oscillations are directly or indirectly depending on what? Resistance and capacitance value. So if you change the resistance and capacitance, then you can easily change the frequency of oscillations of the stable multivibrator. Okay, so this is what the calculation of frequency of oscillations of the stable multivibrator. Thank you.